Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering InterConnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live in Las Vegas for IBM InterConnect 2017. This is theCUBE's three day coverage. We're in day two, wall to wall coverage with theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Jason Kelly, Vice President. He's a partner at IBM's Global Business Solutions, GBS Solutions and Design, part of the group that brings it all together uh, in the digital transformation for IBM. Welcome to theCUBE. Great, I'd be here, thanks for having me. So we were just talking about South by Southwest before we, came, before we kicked on the cameras and you guys had a huge presence there. Um, but you're at an interesting part of IBM and I want you to take a minute to explain what you do because you know, everyone talks about, oh, UX design, you got to develop the future. It's a lot more complicated than just saying UX design. It's, it's, there's true. some work Very involved. True. So take us through what this design uh, experience concept's about and how does it work and why everyone's so bu buzzed up about it because it's getting a lot of traction. It's a great question to start with and I, I, I always get to spin that then as, uh, back to you. So as you said, you know, UX, first thing came out, you said design and UX. So tell me, when you hear design, what do you think of? Do you think of cool ties, what are, jackets? What do, you, what do you think? I think of a nice cube set up with, uh, you know, Couple good user interface guys. on the website. I think of devices. Dave's right? tie. I think of, I, okay. I think of cool visuals, right? I think of, I think of movies, actually. Okay, you know? okay. So, uh, they are things that give you some type of experience. Yeah, right? they create a feeling inside. All right. An emotion, okay. it's emotive. So, so now we're headed in that direction. So take that emotion piece, set that to the side, and think about what also came out. You said device. So it's something that you use, and often when you say design now, they think of the wonderful things like the iPhone. You, you got it, iPhone. They say, oh, what what wonderful design! That design evokes emotion, and so when we think of emotion, take that and put that into business, and think about creating an elegant solution for the outcomes of the end user in a business. Okay, so you have a business that has a problem; they need to solve it and you want to create a solution that evokes emotion. Yeah. So that as they yeah. experience, like you can't set down that phone, we don't want them to set down their IBM solutions. That's the, the type of design that I'm talking about. Jason, this is interesting. I love, Dave and I always talk about this on theCUBE when we get into this kind of like, uh, get into the clouds and look down at the world. The computer industry has always been centered on how many users do you have? I mean user, are you a drug user? Are you like, <laughs> are you like a, what kind of user are you? Like, it's a consumer, right? So like right. now you're right. really getting at the heart of kind of design, transcending computer, a user on a terminal. It's a, they're all consumers. That, so this is kind true. of the new normal. That's, that's right, the new norm is uh, the consumer being the focus. Think of, think of, we'll go back to your phone, you think about this consumable capabilities and that consumption. You think back when, when we thought we were cool and uh, you, you would say, hey, this is my home office, and I've got my fax machine here, and I've got, pager. My, I've got my pager, <laughs> I've got my telephone, I've got all these things. And my it, stereo. You had all those, <laughs> and now, here it is. Yeah. Yeah. And who did this? This is the consumer. And so, having consumable solutions that a consumer would be excited about, but taking that to the enterprise at scale, at scale, did I, did I send someone a great text? No, no, I was just <laughs> yeah. unplugging in. <laughs> so, so that you, you have to- It's got to, a cognitive energy in it, so it's designed well. <laughs> Honey, uh, bring me more milk and bread. So what, what we do from a consumability perspective is just that. Yeah. How, do you, how do you make sure that you have consumer grade solutions that the enterprise can enjoy, right? Yeah. So that's, that's, that is key, and that is what you pivot around. One of the things that we also were watching last week we were at the big data event that we had in Silicon Valley in conjunction with Strata Hadoop is the collision course between the big data world, which tends to be analytics, Watson's got cognitive, and then the cloud. You've got brute force, blocking and tackling, cloud, under the hood, hard IT problems, in production workloads, and you have the cool, sexy, sizzly web app and mobile apps, creativity, kind of coming together. So on one hand, you got creativity, right. you have energy, you have emotions, all this kind of outcome-based consumer thinking. And then you've got the hard, you know, scaffolding the iron and, the, and, the, and under the hood. Like workloads, hard stuff. So how do right. you balance that when you get into the design center? So it's not what people might think, oh, they got the crazy ideas, and I'm going to do this, change the world. But at the end of the day, you got to go implement it. That's, and so take me through that process. So you think about implementation, and we have, um, 
here over the, the last four years established 26 plus IBM design studios globally. And our clients love to come to those studios because they get to talk about what you're, you're asking me here, is that, look, we have all these things, these piece parts, some things new, some things legacy. How do I take this and how do I tie it all together? They, they usually come with these business challenges that say, look, I have a front office and a back office and I'm trying to get all this. We go, wait a second. What you've just described is really one office and in that one office, at the center of all those challenges are data, typically. Yep. And you're trying to figure out, how can, I, how can I make this data work? And then, as soon as you solve that problem, you say, wait a minute, then there's business process that's working between the front office and the back office and this middle office, and then, oh wait, there's also then some regulation that I have to worry about. So now, you have this crashing of these different capabilities. You have this challenge of saying, how do I make the business architecture, work with the technical architecture, work with my human architecture, and that's where design comes in. That's where you, you begin to weave those things together by understanding how each one of those diverse piece, pieces of the business work in harmony. So Jason, what are some of your favorite examples of a, an outcome that drove business value? And, you know, so I'll, I'll use a, a great example, and it was one with a client I was just uh, having a wonderful dinner with last night, the Bank of the Philippine Islands. Banking uh, has each one of these things that I've talked about, trying to be more nimble on the front end, as well as having a very complicated and often regulated back end. This wonderful, wonderful client of, of IBM said, listen, could you come in and help me solve my data problem? Because we have a big data challenge that we're yeah. trying to, I said, sure, well let's, let's understand that. Let's, let's, let's get under the covers of this data problem. In a design workshop with them, walking them through their end users, their end users being all the way through their enterprise, they quickly, in our, our process, realized, wait a minute, it's not our data problem that we have, it's a startup problem. We're always going to have a data problem, but we can't run like a startup. We can't move fast. We're not as agile as we think we are. We think we do DevOps, but our DevOps is separate from agile, and by the way, this design thinking thing is great. How do you weave all of that together? What they found then in their startup was, now that we know what our problem is, you've wowed us, we're wowed but then how do we execute? So we, we, we use this term, if, if I can wow you, you will definitely then how me, right? So how do we do this? And this is where the design came in, where we said, look, now let's understand how you move like a startup, which then did yeah. get under the covers with, well, we need a, a, a cloud capability. We need to have some tooling like Bluemix, where we can go ahead and quickly assemble those things together. Yeah. And we need to understand how we can apply some of our analytics and maybe even cognitive towards our, our clients. So, that's something that started one way, here's the problem, and it's data that really ended up another way. And as they will tell you if you were to ask Bank of Philippine Islands, they'd say, listen, the design doesn't stop. And what they've learned from us is that design never stops. It, it, everything's a prototype in a sense, and design only stops when the problem is solved. And you know, I can ask you, is the problem ever solved? No, it's a moving train every day. Never um, done. The uh, design center is really studio is a great idea. I think it's phenomenal. The question I want to kind of probe into is how much of it is therapy for the for the customer to kind of doctor? Am I okay? I <laughs> think what's going on with me? Can you look around me? Because they're looking for kind of that 360 blind spot and right. how to be innovative. And so you kind of rub, rub their shoulders. You're going to do an okay. You're going to survive. And then you got to wow them. So before you wow them, you have to kind of whip them into shape and get their perspective. So how much of the percentage of time is you know hurting the cats in a therapeutic way? Um, or is it not a factor to then when you get that momentum going? Take us through the psychology of the buyer, your yeah. customer, because I'm all, I can almost imagine the, the opportunities is somewhat intoxicating, right, these days. Yeah. So you so, go, hey, I, I got pressure to go cloud native, but I know it's going to be a disaster if I do. So, so you're, you're on a, a great point, and you, I, I like the thought of, of, of the therapy because, you know, look, it's, it is somewhat of a, a Dr. Phil moment that they have, <laughs> right? Where you sit back and what we find, client after client, is that, sure, we could tell them, here are your pain points. We're IBM, we deal with thousands of clients every week. Here, but that's, that doesn't cause change. I mean, you really have to change in the way that you're, you're acting. So you can't really, we like to use this the phrase. Here's a playbook, run the offense. That's right. You gotta have and, a culture. And you will have, some people say that you have to have a culture. So you can't, you can't, you know, think your way into a new way of acting, you have to act your way into a new way of thinking. And so that's the process, is where you, you bring this discovery by way of 
using the basics of empathy, and this yeah. is design thinking, and, 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 yeah. and it's in the core empathy, of Empathy, great assessment. word. Right? I mean, business but, empathy is really the challenge because, I, mean, I hate to use the example of, you know, will the parachute open? And you know, I always say <laughs> to my kids, pack your own parachute, learn how to pack a parachute. And not that IT is that dangerous, but it can be. I mean, security breaches are, you know, one of those things where the blind trust that's out there and some right. opportunities to Ginny's point on stage today, that's, trust economy. That's, that's, that's this is very true. It could be a dangerous world, so you don't want to just trust the parachute's going to open. Yeah, now, now I will tell you, prior life I, I, I used a parachute. I jumped out Airborne Ranger, jumped out of planes, and I always joke saying, hey, no one is going to get shot out or have, have to jump out of an airplane today, so it'll be fine. <laughs> well, I can laugh and joke, but you're right, because you sit there and, and to any of our clients, it's not a joke. You know, that trust economy that we're in yeah. is, is, is reality. And it has to be you know, under, under laid with, with the confidence that we can bring that to Well, them. cloud, I've said, the cloud which underpins all this is going to move at the speed of trust. Right. If you don't right. trust the cloud, you're not going to use it. Right. So, very, very true. That example you gave, I want to go back to it, because we talked about the emotion. So the emotion comes from, what, the, the consumer experience? You know, the bank that you gave that example. Right. So take us through sort of what that outcome was. I mean, it was the entire experience that was reimagined. Um, so is that right? You, that, well, that's exactly, it was, the experience was when, when the, the, the diverse team across the bank was in one room and going through some of the, the exercises we take them through to, to, to use as empathy for the enterprise. Right, not just for the in individual or designed for a product. This is designed for an entire business. As they sit there and they look across that, you know, what they got out of that was this thought that, wait a second, this is very complicated for my part of the business. Oh, but but wait, your part of the business is having similar challenges, and and oh, yours as well. And then you have the aha moment, like wait, we're all having similar challenges, and this becomes the emotion. The emotion goes, wait a second, you just helped me see something that was right in front of me. It was right there. Thank you, this is the Dr. Phil moment. Because then you say, oh, well, then we're doing this together. And you go, yes, now, now let us walk you through, walk you through walking us through what we might do together, collaboratively. Yeah. And that's where, that's where you get this, this new step change of action. So it's a business, you're a business yeah. therapist, that, but, but also can, <laughs> can implement. Yeah. Right, 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 yeah. right. Because ultimately you do it, you have to make. And we have these, these steps where we, we, we look at um, how we walk through our cycle. And if you think of an infinity sign, yeah. we go through, you must understand, reflect, and make. And we have those as stages of this infinity sign that we, you never stop going through those loops, as we call it, the loop of understanding, reflecting, and making. Jason, I want to talk about the uh mentioned a Dr. Phil moment, this empathy, really a legitimate thing that goes on. Yeah, but you can think I'm plugging Dr. The, Phil, the, right? uh, <laughs> but, the, but also, a lot of customers I can imagine are grounded in disappointment. I mean, the way I felt when Duke lost in the March Madness, <laughs> um, I'm like, and then like, oh my God, how could they be out? I let them going all the way. Right, you know, right. Kind of screws up the brackets, you know? So like, that's IT. IT's a lot like, you know, you make a bet, and sometimes it doesn't pan out, you got to be, be agile. So coming into the disappointment, clients come into the design center, probably with either an itch they're scratching, I want to innovate, and then problems right. that they're trying to solve, which might right. be some baggage, some sort of issue. Mm -hmm. Is there a pattern that you see when the, you have prospects come through and clients come through the design center that are consistent? Like, is there a trend, uh, trending chart? Like, top three stacked ranked issues fall into categorically cloud transformation, uh, Watson Analytics, is there a, uh, a trend uh, line. Uh, and by the way, did you have Duke uh, to go all the way? Yeah, I, I uh, thought they would. So, <laughs> in 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 the the trend that we see, there's some common things that come 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 to mind where a client will say, "I want to move faster," and these are not none of these are going to be surprises. I need to move faster. Okay, I need to be agile. I would love to be more innovative. I would like to take my innovation and put it in action. How do I do all of, all of these things? And, and you'll find if you work with them, you, so why? Why? And we, we play the, the game of five whys. And eventually you get to what the true, the true need is. And that true need is to get to an outcome very quickly. They all have something right in front of them. And it's to be agile, innovative, and 
out in front of the market. All of those things require what you've already called out with the technologies, and they, they are just technologies. The challenge is putting yeah. them in action. So with the whys, you get to the outcome, that's the real pain point, and then you settle into a variety of solution architectural choices. Yes, because that, that architecture battle, as, as we hear from Jenny, you know, it's, it's going to be the architecture battles on cognitive, on AI, and data. And, and, and finding those three, three areas, yeah. that's where it has to be knit together. Enterprise, enterprise strong data first and cognitive to the core. Well said. Yeah, I was listening, you, you. Ginny. <laughs> I listened to all your words uh, and your speech. Uh, and I don't need Watson for that, but I'll forget tonight after I have a few cocktails. Jason, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate the insight. I appreciate it, and, appreciate uh, the time. Be safe jumping out of the airplanes. All right, take and, care guys. Take care. Thanks John, so much. Thanks. More live coverage here from theCUBE after the show break. Stay with us. Some more interviews still on day two to come. Great content here, great guests. More after the short break. <laughs>